Hello my friends, it's time to world build. Hello my beautiful friends, welcome back to another video. Today, we are doing something that I'm so so excited about and I'm sure you all are too because I've been hyping it up so much. I'm starting a brand new vlog series today um, called Adventures in World Building. That's right, I'm gonna be taking y'all along as I world build Project Orion um, because if you've been following along, I'm right now uh, sort of on the road to draft three and I got beta reader feedback for draft two and world building is an issue. And I've kind of been working on it here and there, but I really needed to sit down, create a plan, something that I could actually like follow step by step, know exactly what I'm gonna do. So, this was born. Adventures in World Building, new vlog series, and I'm super excited about it. Each episode, we're gonna be working on a different aspect of world building and a different aspect of improving the world of Project Orion. I have already separated each episode into different categories and what we're gonna be working on. So today, episode one of Adventures in World Building is settings and locations. I'm gonna take you over here to my computer so I can actually look at what is on it. So, episode one, settings and locations. I'm gonna read what I have written here um, for what we're going to do today and other days in this vlog, basically, because it's probably gonna go on longer than just today. I'm not gonna explain anything too much right now. I just wanna like list what we're doing, get it out there. So, settings and locations, we will be going over filling out location templates for each city, town, tavern, POI, etc. Um, changing the name of White Cloak, that's something, all right, I already said I'm not going to explain, we'll get into that. Geography and climate of Northrim, uh, drawing a map of Valiscar, updating and detailing the map of Northrim, population sizes and demographics, water and resources, flora and fauna, and then the moon and other big different things from Earth. So we have a lot to cover in this vlog, but I'm excited, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, oh, also, so... I've always known about, you know, Brandon Sanderson's, his lectures that he puts on YouTube, but I know they're like super long because they're like over an hour long. And so they've been in my watch later on YouTube forever. And then just now, before I was filming, um, I was getting ready. I was like doing my makeup, making a smoothie, which I kind of want right now. And whenever I'm about to go into a very writing intensive day or any sort of task that is just a lot more than just kind of sitting there drafting, more than a first draft, um, requires a lot of brain work. I like to kind of get myself in the mood a little bit and um, read up on or watch videos about what I'm doing that day. So I was looking at world building videos and I know Brandon Sanderson's got his world building stuff. It's an hour long, so I was like, ugh. Especially since it was just to watch before I started filming, so not very long at all. But I started one anyway. I started the beginning of his world building part one video, and I'm like 20 minutes in. It's very good. I'm gonna get myself pumped for world building. So my goal for this vlog series is trying to just get as much world building done in the most efficient amount of time and in the most efficient way. So after I read the beta reader feedback, it was, world building was a big issue. And it's just, there were a lot of inconsistencies or the reader didn't feel as compelled to, to like, to root for the characters or the story or anything like that because I was missing a lot of world building details. There just wasn't enough. It didn't really feel very immersive, I guess. And honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly that bad in that way, but it did, it brought to my attention all of the world building issues that there were. Conflicting details, things that I didn't really flesh out enough because in my own notes I didn't have them, or things that I did have in my own notes and I did know, but I just didn't put it in the story. So, I have divided up the episodes into different aspects of world building and I'm hoping that it will make it really quick and efficient because last time after I read the feedback from betas um, and I tried to start getting into world building, it was very casual world building. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have like a full plan or anything, but I got burnt out really easily. And I think it's because I didn't have a plan because I thrive with plans. Y'all know this. So I have created a very detailed, um, actionable step-by-step -step list to help us world build and get all of these issues fixed. 
Okay, so out of the list that I just read to y'all about what we're doing in this vlog, I think I want to start with population sizes and demographics because that was sort of the one I was kind of scared about because I'm never good at like, you know, there's like so many different countries like in our world of different sizes, demographics. I never understand the relationship with like population and, and the density of cities and area and all that stuff. I'm just not good at like creating that on my own. So I have to look at different guides and then I'm like, well, I don't even know. But last night, um, I was on Pinterest and I saw there was like a random post and I know I've seen it before but I like read it again and this time it like clicked. I guess it's because I have more information on Project Orion and like how I want everything to be um, than I did the first time I had seen this little advice thing. I'm actually gonna pull it up. It was, I mean I'm, I have seen it before but I, it's one of those things where it's like hey writers here's a little helpful thing for you know here's the sizes of countries and how long it would take to like walk across them. And again, because I think I have so much more information now about how I want it to be, um, it just kind of clicked in my head and I was like, yeah, um, it was just this post. I don't know if you can like see it, but it's just like the walking distance across different countries. So using this, I have realized that Northrim, I want it to be the size roughly of Ireland, somewhere between Ireland and the UK. So I think I'm going to start by doing some research on country sizes, demographics, population sizes. I'm doing a lot of hand motions right now. So for the past 45 minutes to an hour, I have been filling out, I'm gonna set this down, oh my gosh, it's so heavy. So I've been working on filling out the, like, the size categories of the templates for Northrim, which is the whole country, and Nuvox, which is the capital. And so I was looking at a whole bunch of different um, demographics for different cities, countries, all over the world, and I have come to the conclusion that Northrim, the country, is about roughly the size of the UK. The Nuvox is slightly smaller than London, I think. I'm no expert in European countries. <laughs> so I think what I'm settling as, um, Northrim, the land area is 91,000 square miles, the population is 31 million, and the population density is 34, or not 3,400, 340 per square mile, and then Nuvox is 120 square miles, the population is 1.26 million, and then the population density is 10,413. I did do so much math for this. <laughs> so I think I've got that pretty much figured out, at least a lot more figured out than I had it before. So I am now actually going to cross this out. Okay, so right now it is noon. It just became 12. I was not planning on spending that much time on that one part, but I'm kind of glad I did because I feel like I have a much better understanding of the the size of the world and the city and all this stuff because before I had a really good picture of it in my head, but I had no like real world thing to compare it to. It's noon right now. Gavin's about to get home for lunch and then after lunch at one o'clock, I'm streaming today. So I'm gonna start getting ready for that. Next time I see y'all is probably going to be during the stream. So during the stream, I'm probably, what I'm probably gonna work on next is the geography and climate of Northrim, just because I, I do have a pretty good idea of that and I think I could get that done relatively quickly. Um, so I'm probably gonna be working on the geography and climate, changing the name of White Cloak. And the thing with that, was that I didn't ever think anything of it and it was just I wanted to it was it's the name of this sort of like rebel group rebel community um, on this island really far away it's like the secret group they call themselves the white cloaks and all of my beta readers it was fine it wasn't a big deal but one of my beta readers was like this sounds like the KKK and I was like whoa <laughs> 
because that was never my intention but there was only one who mentioned that so I'm like okay it's really not a big deal but as I've always been writing throughout the drafts, I've one issue I've had is that they call themselves the White Cloaks and then the community, like the actual like town name, they called White Cloak. So it was kind of like, I was just saying this word a lot over and over and I, it was like a hard time distinguishing between the person and the town. And then someone says, I'm like the KKK. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna change it. And then the next two are probably gonna be water and resources and flora and fauna. So that's pretty exciting, but I'm gonna do those all during the stream. So I will see y'all then. All right, so um, it's a little bit later right now. I am in the stream right now. Uh, we just started our second sprint and I, go <laughs> I have this vegan key lime pie in my freezer and I'm gonna eat it, I'm really excited. Um, I should probably like cut off a slice instead of just eating the whole thing like a cookie because I just bit into it. Anyway, but <laughs> so I finished, oh gosh, I can't even remember, I have to go back to it. I should probably get my notes ready before I start talking. Okay, so we did the population sizes and demographics earlier. Um, right before the stream, I finished the geography and climate and right now I'm working on the water and resources section. Wow, there's like actually light now. It's been so like cloudy and overcast all day long. So the lighting was so dark earlier and now it's bright again. Mm, so good. So right now I'm doing water and resources and I don't think it'll be too hard. I already have the water part done um, because North Rim has a lot of like rivers and there's this really big dam like in the middle of the country and use that for like drinking water, hydropower, irrigation, stuff like that. So now we're gonna move on to the resources and this one should also be pretty easy. Like I have all this information already in my head. I just, well not everything, but this one specifically, um, I've already got it because it's kind of a big plot point of the story. Well, it becomes a bigger plot point in the story in like books two and three. In the first one, it's there, and it's Aldurium, which is like an element, I guess. Um, it's like a mining, you mine for it, and it's like a, st a stone rock. I had to do tons of research, I mean, this was like a year ago. I did do so much research about elements and minerals. <laughs> I also, I, I mean, I was lamenting my use of lists in the last vlog, but I have so many lists, and they're all over the place, I, so many like, notes and stuff because I'll take notes when I'm brainstorming by hand in my notebook and then I'll move it on here and then when I first got Scrivener I wanted to use it to like brainstorm because I wanted to try that because um, I don't normally do it on the computer and so now I've got all these notes on here like let me show you I just picked up the camera to show y'all um, my like the left side of the Scrivener where I have all my folders to show y'all how many random things I have and then I realized that I'm open on the document that has all of the plot stuff for book two. So I am gonna force myself to not forget to edit that out. This whole folder, the pre-writing folder right here, is just all these notes, just completely random notes. Some of them even like repeat each other, plus my notes that are by hand. So I'm gonna go through all these and compile all the information just to make sure I have it all when I actually put it in the correct document, correct list. First, I'm gonna take another bite of my key lime pie. They're so frozen, it's so hard. And took the fork with it. Okay, so I just crossed off two more things off the list. I finished the water and resources and I finished the flora and fauna. And I wanted to share how I'm sort of organizing this because I'm starting, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just very indecisive and I like reading. There's a few pieces of media that I take a lot of inspiration from. And so a lot of them are video games. I've talked about this. Um, my Project Orion's original inspirations was Bioshock Infinite. Um, but so I like going on and like looking at the wikis for them. So like for example, um, right now I'm on the Dishonored wiki. And so you know how it's separated where it's like, you know, the different categories and it's like paragraphs written about them. And it's almost kind of like in a story form. Like it's just like writing instead of bullet points. What I'm doing right now in Scrivener 
is bullet points. So like what I'm doing right now is using these bullet points, how it's separated by the category and then the bullet points. But I really like that like this, you know, it's like paragraphs. I mean, here's some bullet points, but you know what I mean. Like everything's written out so nice and neat in paragraph form. And now I'm wondering if I want to do that. I mean, I'm not going to like change everything right now because I already have it like this, but I feel usually when I make these lists and fill out these templates and stuff like that, I feel organized and I feel, you know, I can, I get it in the best way for me to do it. And then I fill it out and I'm like, great, this is nice. But I don't, I don't know if this template is serving the purpose I want it to, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because like I have all these templates for different things. Um, and this is the setting template, setting profile template that I use for all like my major settings and locations that they go to. And I just don't know if it's what I want it to be, so I'm not gonna like rework everything right now, <clears throat> but I, I don't know. I might change it in the future. we're making maps. It's the next day and actually I think it's two days later and if I check my to-do list we have done everything except drawing and updating the maps and then filling out the templates which we're not gonna do right now because we're gonna focus on the maps. It's time for some map making. I'm so excited. I love making maps. These are the two maps I have for Project Orion so far um, but we're about to make so many more. First of all, ignore the makeup. I was just playing around with makeup and then I was like, oh, kinda gotta finish this vlog. <laughs> so, next up, we're gonna on some maps. Specifically, um, drawing the map of Alaskar, which is the second continent slash country I was talking about, um, and then updating and detailing the map of Northrim. So I do not currently have a map of Alaskar, which is the other country because Book one of Project Orion doesn't really take place in it or mention it really, except like one character is was born there. But other than that, I don't really talk about it. It becomes a major player in books two and three, which obviously I'm not writing right now. But since we're on this step of our world building adventure, um, I want to just get it done, get it there. And also because a lot of the like the history of this whole world, they're both gonna kind of impact that, you know? Especially because Northrim came after Valaskar, so it's like the, the, the history of Northrim comes from Valaskar, so I kind of just gotta get these things going. This is my map of Northrim, the main country where this story takes place. I've showed this map so many times, um, but it's kind of a mess. This other map is a very rough and unfinished map of Nuvox, which is the main city that is sort of central to the plot points. It's super unfinished, but I have like all the districts and boroughs and stuff of um, North or Nuvox. They both start with N. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> it just happened and now I keep getting them confused. Nuvox is the city, Northrim is the country. So I have all the districts and stuff figured out for Nuvox. I know like what's going on there and each little thing has its own stuff, but I haven't made a map with all of them in it. And then for Northrim, I have changed a few things as you can see. Um, some, there's some cities that have like arrows pointing to like places that I need to move them to because it's not like where I want them to be. So we're going to be working on all this lovely map stuff today and probably nothing else. Also, I have been watching more of 
Brandon Sanderson's um, writing lectures, and they're all really good. Uh, where is it? Number six. Le lecture number six, I actually like liked it because it was very helpful. Um, right now I'm only watching the world building ones, so I haven't actually watched like everything, but there we go. That's a little better. Actually, we're gonna go to this side because the light is a little better. It was actually really stormy yesterday because it's been so overcast. I think because of the hurricanes, I don't actually know what's going on because I'm not anywhere near the coast, but whenever there's hurricanes, we tend to get a lot of rain up here. Okay, so I'm... I don't know what I'm gonna do first. I think the main things, I'm not going to focus on New Box right now, like the city, because um, I want to focus on the two countries first and just making sure those are as updated as I want them to be. Um, I think I'm going to start with, you know what, let's start with Valascar. I have, I, this is the country that I've literally never thought of. <laughs> I actually only started brainstorming it and came up with it. Um, like a few months ago when I started brainstorming books two and books three. So I don't even know what it's going to look like or anything. I just know that it's going to be south of Northrim because I named Northrim Northrim, so now it has to be in the north. It has to have a plane. Why would they call it Northrim if it wasn't in the north? Even though I was literally picturing the other country above Northrim. But I dug this grave, and so I'm, I'm going to lay in it. So the first thing that I want to do is, I know this is going to be above it, so I've got this right here, and I just kind of want to think about the layout, the situation. Um, I know this country has to at least be <laughs> within the lower half of North Rim. I'm going to move this a little bit, and I'm just going to start thinking of the placement, and then kind of go from there. I don't really have a set routine for map making. I just like to think whenever I'm doing two countries like this I like to just think of placement first and then I sort of just like to make some blobs and it just kind of starts to to come together like that. So I just sort of start making a bunch of blobs until I get some sort of shape. <laughs> and in this situation I was also sort of playing um, with like our real life history of like having a, a super continent like Pangaea and everything. Because um, right here I've decided I kind of want it to be, um, what is this, southwest <laughs> of North Rim. And so then I was looking, okay I've got this sort of piece right here. So I made this, you know, and not saying that it has to be completely historically accurate like that, um, but I, I think of it as a nice sort of stepping stone once I find the placement, and then I can kind of play around with the existing continent that I have. Again, this kind of only works when you've already got one and you're making another one, but it's kind of just a nice jumping off point. Um, and then I literally don't have a method at all. Um, I just start drawing some blobs and then um, a sort of shape will start to form and I'll sort of sort of start to start to darken the lines a bit uh, just to kind of get that shape and I may play around with it more kind of change some stuff but I do have this general shape and I like it so once I have this general shape um, I'm gonna put this under here and I'm just gonna grab a marker it literally doesn't matter we're still gonna be super messy right now so I'm just gonna grab a marker or a pen or just something darker and we are just going to, actually I'll do this side. Actually no, I want this side. Oh, indecisive. Okay. We're just going to start to make it darker um, and get a shape, like a solid shape that I can then manipulate a little more if I want, but this is just to kind of get the main shape of the country. Again, really not specific or uh, professional in any way.
Okay, look, we have a shape, and I did change it slightly. Um, you know, there were some areas that kind of went in a little bit more, but this one has that a lot. It's got a lot of squiggly lines, and it's very, like, weird shaped, so I kind of wanted to do something. I was, I've always been thinking of this one as a little more, like, a large mass and not much in regard to, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> And here's our continent. And now I'm gonna get another piece of paper and we are going to trace over it with a better pen, not a marker. Cause we want this one to be slightly more defined. Okay, we're actually gonna use a pencil first because this paper's kinda thick and I can't really see it well unless I like hold it right up to the light. So we're gonna do a pencil first right now just to make sure we got that line going and then we'll define it with pen. I don't know if you can see it very well in this lighting, but I traced over it with pencil, and now we're gonna do it with pen. All right, so we did it with pen. It's not gonna look perfect because, you know, I drew, you know, there's little squiggles here and there, but we'll add like the actual like definition later. Right now we just wanna get the general shape. So that's how I get the general shape of a map. Whenever I'm making maps for continents, countries, anything like that, that's the system I use, I guess, if you wanna call it that. I don't do anything very fancy. I've heard of people doing like uh, pouring dry rice on a paper or dry beans and shape or chasing around the shapes that they make I just like to make a bunch of random shapes and go from there so once I have the map I would usually go through and add um, like the major cities that I know of so you know for the map that I have for Northrum already um, there are major cities that they go to in the book or that are mentioned or anything like that and so I went through and put those major cities down where I knew where they were um, or at least their general placement in the story, like if there's one by the coast or anything like that. So um, on their like adventure, their journey that they go on in Project Orion, the first town that they go to is on the coast. But it's not just like, okay, pick any coast. I know that it's about a few hours away from where they started, which was Nuvox. And as y'all saw me do yesterday, or the day before yesterday, um, I also have a better idea of like the sizing and like the proportions of how far away things are from each other. But usually if I didn't do all that first, um, I just have a good idea of where things go in my head. So I would do that now with this one and put like the major cities down. But since I've literally never done anything with this country and I just created it and they don't even go to it in book one, it's it was just for the purpose of like having it and sort of letting it help me come up with like the history a bit later on and stuff like that. We're not going to do that. Um, so right now we're going to go back to North Rim and work on updating and detailing this as much as possible. Also real quick, so I wanted to give a comparison of our two maps. This was the one that we had randomly made some blobs and this one was the finished one. So you can kind of see the similarities. Uh, but also how they're different. Those are actually pretty good. It's a pretty good match, I would say. <laughs> Let me see if I can find any like original copies of the map of Northrim, even though this is basically the original. Um, I don't know if I have any more copies anywhere. I've kept all of my notes, and it's actually crazy how much things have changed and being able to see that progress. Oh, okay. I found, sort of, this is a bunch of different shapes of Northrim and what I was planning. As you can see though, they're all pretty similar-ish as this one. I sort of had an idea of what I wanted it to look like. See, like I had Nuvox being at the top um, and then this shape, kind of SC shape. And then there was a peninsula down here with the island down here. And that definitely stayed the same here. Okay. So, we are gonna get another piece of paper out. We're gonna trace the map of Northrim since I know that this 
uh, like the shape is what I want it to be. That's good. I'm going to keep that. It's only going to be a matter of moving things around within the country. Oh, it just got super cloudy again. So I hope y'all can see. So we're going to take our existing map. We're going to put it underneath the new paper. And again, it's so hard to see, which I don't like. Actually, I'm going to try something. I've never tried this before. Um, but it's still like white. Okay, I'm going to see if this works, which I've never actually used before. Well, I've used the tablet before, but I've never tried it as a backlight. Oh my god, I just gave myself a paper cut. Oh goodness, that was not fun at all. And I'm bleeding. Okay, awesome. Well, <laughs> let's hope this goes good. Ow. It like went over my nail. That hurt really bad. So once I have the new map, I'm going to go through with the pen or the marker and mark the cities or the areas where I know where they are. So like I know this is here and then like I have an arrow here because I moved some things. Um, or like labeling, like I have the ocean names or the name of the island or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to go through here and put those in. Oh, also, so I just remembered, I don't remember if I talked about it in the vlog the other day when I was filming, uh, but I changed the name, I did change the name of White Cloak, and I changed it to White Veil. So I was about to write White Cloak, and then I was like, wait, I changed it. So make sure you always keep track of your updated names uh, so you don't mess up. So it has actually just started to rain, so it's really um, gross outside. Not gross, because I love rain, but the lighting is not good. But I actually just ran into a problem because I was making the new map and realized in the old one I had, so I had drawn some arrows to move some things around. I had accidentally moved two cities to the wrong places. So now on this map, um, they're in the wrong spot. And it normally wouldn't be an issue if they were just regular cities, but these are places that they go to like in a certain order and it matters geographically where they are so I'm actually gonna have to make a new map which is not fun I was really not wanting to do that but since I've already messed this one up I'm going to use this as like a rough draft in the sense of I'm now going to go with pencil and map out specific spots and just use it to change everything up mark it all up um, because now it doesn't matter. And another issue I have realized I've run into, and this also kind of has to do with plot. Um, so in the original, there's, I had put, well I hadn't quite finished them. There's a mountain range, it's in pencil, so I don't know if you can see it, but there's a mountain range down here. And our characters are coming from up here, and they're going down here. And in the story, there's a scene when they're almost about to reach here, but they get stuck in the mountains and they have to go through this like mountain pass area and they get kind of stranded in the mountains and it's this whole thing. Um, so they were gonna kind of go straight through this to these mountains so that it works, but I also didn't realize that also in the story, they have to go like this way because they have to hit this city. Um, so they have to go that way and then like straight there. So I kind of have to redo either the route or where the mountains are because they need to hit the mountains, but the way I've written it was that they have to go here first. So I would also, I would either need, welcome home. <laughs> Gavin just walked in, but he doesn't want to say hi. But regardless, I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm gonna have to reroute their whole area or change where the mountains are. So it's a few days later and I haven't worked on anything else. Um, I'm actually currently battling a four day migraine, so I'm not feeling the best, but I have taken medication and I am ready to get some writing done because I haven't worked on anything and I really want to. So I have worked more on some of the setting profiles, like the templates I've been talking about. Um, the, so I know I mentioned this, the template that I have for like the main, main, main locations, main major settings, I don't know why that was so hard for me to get out. I don't really think it's working for me. It's, I don't know, the information that's on there, 
I it's just not really what I'm wanting. I haven't changed anything too much yet. I did like move some move some stuff around and just add information just outside of the template. But I'm probably going to end up changing it at some point and reworking it uh, to better fit the information that I want to have for these settings. So I have been working on those and I actually have um, Nuvox pretty fleshed out. And Nuvox was the city that I knew the most about just because so much of the story revolves around this city. And so I already had most of the stuff already figured out. So currently Nuvox's template thing is as filled out as I'm gonna have it for right now. Um, and then I do, I've worked on some of the other locations as well, but they're not nearly as fleshed out. But I don't wanna worry too much about it if I am gonna be changing a bunch of stuff. Um, I do just wanna make sure I have a lot of the main major information about these settings written down so that I can have them. So I'm just gonna grab a pencil and we're just gonna go in here and mark all over it, move stuff around and make it as <clears throat> Whoa. And we're gonna make this as accurate as it should be. Hello everybody. So we have a slight change of situation because my camera, there's an issue with the lens and it's not working and it was a whole thing and I basically had to return it and I'm gonna get a different camera but I don't have it right now so it's kind of a whole thing but I'm gonna be filming on my phone for the rest of this video. Hopefully not for too much longer though, but for the rest of this video, it is gonna be filmed on here. I hope it doesn't look too bad or too much different, um, but I know that there's probably gonna be a quality difference. Sorry about that. Also, if you can hear any background noise, it's because it is raining like really hard. I'm actually gonna show y'all because it's ridiculous and I think it's really cool. It has been raining like this all day and so if you can hear that I do apologize and also Gavin's over there so if you hear him that's him so um, yeah we're gonna be doing it on here the I'm trying to remember what we were doing last time um, it's been like two days I think because of the camera issue and then it was I could it just, it's been it's been a hard time over here but I think we're working on the map stuff. So, oh yes, because I messed everything up, I forgot. So, we're gonna have to redo this map. So, we're gonna go through this map right now with a pencil, I'm just gonna mark it up and fix our mistakes that we made and go from there. So, I hopefully have the finished map that I will stick with and not mark all over. I think I'm actually going to keep this one that I did make but messed up as the one that I mark all over since it's already pretty marked up. Um, and then I do still have this one and I'm probably just going to keep it. I'm probably not going to have it at the forefront though. I'll probably just put it away somewhere with the other notes. Um, and then have this one out specifically for marking all over, especially because like I started putting down like story events, um, not just having a plain map, but a more interactive for my knowledge of like where things in the story happen. So I'll keep that for that one and then this will be the one that I'm not going to touch unless I know for sure I'm putting down something that is like the permanent place for it. But now that I have finished the map, um, and like I said, I'm not, I have the other one, where'd it go? I have this one, ooh, 
for Velascar, but I'm not going to be working on that quite yet because I don't have all of the like history information stuff that would influence it. So, but now that I have this one, I'm looking at my to-do list for everything we need to do in this episode for settings and locations. And the only other thing is filling out the location templates. And like I said, I've already got the main information for each of the cities. Again, I don't have it for every little place they go to because they go to a lot of different random places. But for the major cities and like the major areas that they visit, I do have the main stuff written down and figured out. Um, especially because I think I'm going to be changing this template because I don't know if this style is really working for me. But other than that, that was the only other thing that I had on my to-do list for this episode of Adventures in World Building number one. I'm so excited about that. But yeah, so I think I'm going to actually end this one here um, because we have done everything that we need to do. Uh -huh. Is this supposed to like end at all today? All right, so I'm going to end this one here. This concludes episode one. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna see y'all in the next episode of Adventures in World Building, and I will give y'all a sneak peek. It's gonna be government and religion. Okay, goodbye. See you the next one. <laughs>